Hello. So I'd like to continue our discussion on a Berlin tree. And uh, this is, a, is I guess, a, is a series that is trying to study the paper by uh, Professor Berman like back in the 70s. I guess we fi finally get into the main course. So um, we are going to show like in this uh, video uh, the first theorem. So basically saying that like if I have um, some additive tree metric, so basically I, I have um, a, a tree, maybe I just sketch a tree first. Uh, I have a tree like this here and let's say I create some long as additive tree matrix is like uh, for each of our edge I kind of assign a uh, a metric for that and then I add them together let's say um, so in the sense like, I, I know or like as you say I know like uh, for each node like what's the distance between each of them then uh, and uh, if I know like for for between each pair of nodes I know that metric uh, the distance between them then the um, structure of the tree is completely uh, specified and uh, and uh, I guess I we we call that like why we want that is that like we one of the application is say like, for uh find you no know, genetic tree so it's like to uh to study of like the evolution of biology so let's say if I have um uh for different species. Maybe I have the gen uh, genome for each of the species, and uh, one way we can define the metric is say I can, for example, I have one species here, and I have this this species S and my species R here, as I am look at like what's the transition probability of the genome say from S to R, let's say, and uh, I can create a transition matrix like maybe P S R, so it's like. Uh, Transition from species S to R. This I can get that get that with statist, uh, just doing some statistics, and also like I can also like um, find the transition from R and S. So I have a PLS as well. Then uh, I can create an addictive um, um, metric as just the determinant of PSR. Probably I need to put the absolute side there. So and uh, as the me oops let's erase this. So I I can say the distance of S and R as they uh, determine P L S log plus P L determine P S R. So if I have um. This as my metric, like that if I have another species here, like from S out, maybe I have a P here, and for this, well, maybe it's better to use Q here. There's too many P here. Uh, maybe uh, Q. So I I will have a transition from R to Q. I have like P R Q and P Q R, and uh, again I I will have like the distance from like uh species R to Q can be defined as a log uh, P uh, R Q plus log P Q R let's say and then you know you know that like you know that like this distance is addictive because like, I have like delta from S to Q now is just equal to log it's just sum of these two together because I have log P uh, S Q here is equal to like P uh, S R times S R times R Q, and I have plus log P uh, S uh, Q S here. P Q S equal to uh, determinant of P. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me write better. So this is like PSR determined PSR times P uh, RQ something like and this is like P um 
this is SQ here, P Q RL times P R S, right? And then uh, this log determinant log product of this determinants will become log P S R plus log P L Q and so and so forth, therefore we believe you could do some of these two guys here. Um yes. So I I I, I think it should be obvious, so maybe I just don't write it here. So it's a kind of, so um, it's kind of this additive metric, and as I said, like off this P here, I can get uh, with some statistical data, and then I, I, if I have genome from different species, I can estimate this P here, and based on that, I can estimate this metric here, and from the metric, I can construct the tree structure basically according to Boomer's theorem, and uh, and of course it's based on the Boomer construct Boomer interpretation of graph or like Boomer tree. Um, that is, um, as I said, um, I guess I may be better to give another review again. Like basically the Boomer construction first contains a base set. So in this example on the left here, I have base set is is just uh, the set S is equal to one, two, three, four. I have four elements here, and then um, for each of the node, okay, I should talk about split again. I split first. For uh, the split is I, I I'm going to split uh, each of this um, each of the split is basically to separate the base set into two partitions. For example, like second one here. Partition is to one and also the complement of one, basically one and two, three, four. And typically we we say like we write sim of one contain two sets like S one C O and S one one. I mean this case S one C O is equal to one and S one one is equal to two three four. And similarly I, I can have sim two is like this and, and so on and so forth. And then each of the node is like um we are going to pick from each of the sigma, each of the split, pick one of the subset and put them together. I will form a node. So for example, for this node here, for sigma one, I pick one and sigma two, I pick the subset one, two, three and sigma three, I pick, pick subset one, three, four and so on. So this, I form a node here. And then I, uh, uh, for, for two adjacent nodes or for two nodes, if they only differ by one of the subsets, like for example, this one and this one only differ by sigma one, so then they will be connected by edge like sigma one. So, okay, this is again like all review of like what we talk about uh, for um, for the last several uh, videos. And um, now, uh, am I also, I guess, likely to to show the proof here, I guess I, uh, I guess I to show the main theorem, our uh, main theorem today. Uh, I need to. Okay, I guess I I, I probably should re re review that like we have match we 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 have um some uh distant measure or like uh, in the original paper they call it like uh dissimilarity coefficient like d so it's like you think of like out of this base subset here maybe there's some lateral measure uh between like uh two elements two members in the uh base subset base set so i for example i have d a basic basically like for for two elements in the base subset, I, I have some uh, d a b is a distance between the two elements, and uh, and I we we have the additive tree matrix metric um, can be quite laterally uh, specified as like delta m one m two. Let's say if I have two nodes and um, it will be given by some mu sigma and some of and also delta sigma m one and two. 
So delta sigma is basically equal to uh, w equal to one if uh, m one m n two uh, have like take different subsets from sigma. So for example, like if I have m one is equal to uh, s one zero s one zero s two zero s two uh, s three zero m n two is equal to s11, s21, and s3, 0 then, uh, then basically like delta delta then in that case uh, delta sigma 1 will be equal to 1 but delta sigma and actually delta sigma 1 equal to delta sigma 2 is equal to 1 because these two are not the same but like Delta sigma of three is equal to zero, and uh, yeah, that and and actually, uh, it's very easy to say. I guess like we talk about that like in the last couple of videos that, like, if we consider like these two nodes here, and we consider like the support of this node, let's say the support contain A and this support contain B, so again the support will be the intersection of all these subsets in the inside the node. So so support uh, M1 contain AM support N2 in, in could B. Then if I define delta A B as something similar that mu sigma delta sigma A B. So where this delta here, delta sigma is equal to one delta sigma equal to one if uh, sigma separate a from b and c or otherwise if I have a definition like that then um, basically like if I have like a in support of m1 and b in support of m2 then the distance like uh, of m1 and m2 of these two nodes this additive tree mm, distance between M1 and M2 will be the same as like this delta AB. And it's often more convenient to play with delta AB instead of like delta M1 and M2. And that's, that's what we are going to do uh, in the following as well. And, uh, and what else I need to review? I guess I am also like mu sigma, uh, if I given a D here, uh, there's a lateral um, natural uh, way to connect like mu sigma with d basically we can select mu sigma as one uh, one half minimum uh, a b c d such that a uh, sigma separate A, B from C, D, and, uh, and I have D, A, C plus D, B, D minus D, A, B minus D, C, D inside. If I have, if I have that, uh, uh, then many things will become pretty nice. Basically, uh, we have uh, earlier we have a lemma that like uh, given this we actually have I think it's a like lemma 9 or something like that that uh, this with this mu sigma I can think of like with this mu with this mu sigma here defined this way then the delta, I will just write delta d here, is say dy from that distance. Then this delta d here, let's say for any a, b, delta d, a, b, will be, uh, will be less than or equal to d, a, b for any, for any a and b in S. Oh, uh, and this, this is a, we'll use this lemma like, for the proof of 
the theorem. So let's see like what else I uh, we need that like in the proof. Maybe I should uh, just mention all of them first. Um, and of course, like this lemma, we we have shown that like in one of uh, our earlier uh, videos. Um, I think that's it. Looks like we are uh, ready for the proof. Yes, I, I think so. So, um, so let's let me start with a new page here. So, um, so again, the, the, the maybe more precisely as write down the theorem. So the theorem is basically, the theorem one is like if I have um, I have this two tree, tree T1 and T2 and then uh, let's say I have the at some additive tree matrix for T1 and additive tree, tree matrix for T2 so therefore I have T1, uh, delta T1, A, B for some any two nodes. No, oh, sorry, not nodes here, any two member in S. Or or you can think of like, if I have two nodes, again, if you have two nodes, say M1 and M2, if I pick the supports of the, that two nodes, I might pick an element out of that and I can compute, I can use that to compute distance. And that, that A, B is like the uh, element, an element inside the support of the first node and B is the uh, element uh, inside the support of the second node. And uh, so I write, define this as again a sigma in T1, uh, alpha sigma delta sigma AB. So I, I'm not using mu here because I, it's some uh, arbitrary metric, let's say I have some arbitrary metric like alpha sigma it's not related to some underlying D here, so but I, I don't know, like it's some kind of sigma here and uh, um, some some uh, reasonable alpha sigma here and then I, I, I have another tree like delta T2 have a metric between like any upper tree two member of S, so again like AB in S such that um, Sigma in T2. Now let, let me use like beta, beta sigma delta sigma A B. Now if I, I if I have like for any A B, for any A B such that like delta T1 A B is equal to delta T2 A B, then what I have from the theorem is that T1 is simply equal to T2. So it's the same tree, and also like uh, alpha sigma is equal to beta sigma. So the um, this uh I don't know what's the name for this precisely but this coefficient here is basically the same. So let's take a look of the proof now. So what we're going to do the trick is uh um let me just look at for for the first T like T one here. So what we are going to do is I we basically will pick the D. So remember that we, uh, we we, this is now a metric that can measure the distance between any A B way. I I will just take it as the underlying metric. So I can think of D some define some D here is exactly defined as a delta T one here. Now with this underlying metric, I can, um. Uh, kind of like uh, extend or like uh, create a uh, mu d here as we have before um, or mu sigma that basically is equal to uh, this one half minimum uh, d of course this mu sigma depends on a d here I can put a Maybe maybe it's okay. Like in the node, I mean the 
uh, in, okay, in the paper it doesn't have that. Let, let me, it's okay. It's understood that like uh, mu sigma depend on d here. And d a c plus d b d minus d, of course I have comma here, d a b minus d c d. And such that uh, a b, or let me be, a sigma separate AB from CD um, and with this mu sigma now I can really uh, kind of um, uh, try kind of create a uh, tree additive tree metric like delta D here so delta D will be just equal to um, or let me be I write delta D A B is equal to similar to like this one but I have sigma in T1 and uh, I have mu sigma instead and delta sigma A B okay so and uh, from this delta D here Oh wait a sec. Oh, okay, I I I think like I, I need to also. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. Like uh, yeah, it's okay. I, I'm I'm, I I I think uh I want to. Um, kind of reveal. All the lemma that I am using here, but, uh, it's okay. I guess, so. And remember that like previously, like in a couple of videos before, we also show that like for a construction of sigma like this, like if I have a D basically like a, a adaptive tree metric cup extended by a lateral distance D here, um, then uh, basically uh, we will have the um, Whenever the mu sigma is, if I have like two sigma one and sigma two, let's say two splits here, sigma one and sigma two, and then I, uh, I will have like this splits are compatible. And let me go back to here. This sigma one and sigma two, let's say if I have two sigma one and sigma two here, these two splits are compatible. If and only if like mu sigma one is bigger than zero and mu sigma two is bigger than zero, this is what what we show uh in in the past, um, and uh, basically compatible is just saying that like we 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 need all the sigmas there to be compatible. Otherwise, if if they are not compatible, what you construct there won't be a tree. It can be uh, a graph as well, um, and. Uh, and so therefore, like if I give them a mu sigma, something like a definition of mu sigma here, uh, I that will automatically induce a tree, right? Because like given the mu sigma, I will just gather all the sigmas that um that have mu sigma is bigger than zero. Then the set of that, so what I'm saying that like the tree is just equal to sigma such that mu sigma is bigger than zero. Because like a tree is completely specified by the um the splits. So once we have specified the splits, there's tree structure there, right? Um, and um, so therefore, like if I I've specified the mu sigma, then I will specify the tree. So I hope it's kind of clear. So um, so uh, so. Should I write it down? Maybe I should write it down. So, uh, I have three is like that. So therefore, like mu sigma, uh, give a mu sigma. Uh, a tree is specified. Um. And. Uh, And uh, let, let's go back to here. So, 
we 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 start from having like define d as some like delta as like delta t one, and then from d here we kind of like create a mu sigma laterally uh, a lateral mu sigma as as the one that I, we have repeated many times. And then, like from that music, we construct a additive tree metric, and from that additive tree metric, we can specify a tree. And we came that like basically, this mu sigma will show that like this mu sigma has to be bigger than like alpha sigma, bigger than or equal to alpha sigma, and I know that like because whenever like mu sigma is bigger than zero then my sigma will be included in the tree so therefore like i will have um basically this condition will guarantee that i have the tree here will kind of like a uh, superset as the original tree t1 uh, in the sense of a superset is like it include more splits than T1. So if like I have a split like in T1, the split has to be like in TD as well. And I will claim that like uh, actually this subset has to be uh, cannot be a strict subset. So therefore like instead of like uh, I have TD uh, as superset of T1 is that I will have TD equal to T1 because like if I have a strict subset if I have like TD a strict subset of T1 that actually implies that like I have like mu sigma is strictly bigger than alpha D uh, alpha sigma I'm sorry it's strictly bigger than alpha sigma oh. <laughs> what is my hand doing it's strictly bigger than alpha sigma so but if like uh, mu sigma is strictly bigger than alpha sigma let's see what, what we have I have Delta D here, maybe I'll use a different color. Delta D here is equal to this guy, and this is strictly mu sigma is strictly bigger than alpha sigma. That means it's strictly bigger than sigma in T1, alpha sigma, delta sigma, AB. But what is this? This is exactly equal to this one when you see exactly equal to this one this is actually it's just oh, I guess I can erase this one here it's just equal to delta t1 a b but of course I like, voice delta t1 delta t1 is d here right? it's basically bigger than d but uh, as we mentioned earlier that like we show it last time we have this lemma line is saying that like delta d has to be like uh, less than equal to d so this in mid on where or very this kind of like violate lemma line so therefore what we have is like we can't have this to happen so therefore we must have like td is equal to t1 and also like uh, mu sigma is equal to alpha sigma and uh, and of course I here we start with uh, allowing I mean start with uh, just letting like d is equal to delta t1 right we can do the same thing like d is equal to delta t2 so therefore we will also have like t2 is equal to td so therefore we will eventually we have t2 is equal to td is equal to t1 and also, also like beta sigma is equal to mu sigma equal to alpha sigma. So therefore, we will have have this con um, have uh, this condition here satisfied. So okay, of course, like, we didn't show the key step yet. We we are just lay out the whole thing. Uh, the key step is again like this one here. Uh, we are basically uh, claiming that like mu sigma under this construction here my mu sigma will be bigger than alpha sigma so if this is true then we will complete the proof um, so I guess I will keep all this here um, instead of starting a new page 
see. Maybe it would be better to start a new page. Maybe I can. I I can erase up to here maybe. Let's see. So okay, let let's let's start from here again. So we want to show. Uh, mu sigma is bigger than equal to alpha sigma. So um. So what we're going to start first is like, so we have mu sigma equal to this optimization optimized uh, session problem. Okay, kind of like pick the uh, A, B, C, D such that like uh, sigma separate this and then minimize this uh, this sum here. So let's say I I I have like in particular some A, B, and C, D that satisfies that. So now. Instead of like saying this is the minimum, I would say it's just equal to that. It turns out like uh, this is the A, B, C, D actually satisfy that. So is it fine with that? So I guess. So now instead of like I, I, I just finished the optimization problem and then like this A, B, C, D is exactly that A, B, C, D that um, minimize the problem. So therefore I have sigma, mu sigma is equal to this A, B, C, D here. Uh, now, uh, Know that like for T one, of course, like T one, T one will have a uh, a bunch is contained by a bunch of sigmas, right? So T one is basically is is a set of splits, and this set of splits, I can partition them into several subsets. So I can partition them into like splits uh, that separate. A B from C D and uh, a set space that separate A from B C D and also a set that separate uh, B from A C D and uh, okay I, I guess I don't this is a C from whatever C from A B D and A B C and also D. Note that, that that's all. I I don't have something like uh, sigma that sep separate A C from B D and so on because uh, note that like sigma that separate A B from C D and uh, sigma that separate A C from B D are not compatible. So they they should not um uh, be both of them like all all these two uh, different kind of space uh, occur in the same tree. So and uh, of course I I know that already I I should be able to find some A B C D that separate uh I mean uh I mean some sigma that will separate A B from C D so therefore like. I know that the type I should have is like I have A B will separate from C D, but I don't have like A C separate from B D and so on and so forth. So okay, anyway, this is all five sets here. Now what what I I would define some variables say like, for convenience. I would call like lambda A B as the sum of all the alpha sigma in the for the sigma that separate A B from C D. And similarly, I have lambda a is equal to sum of alpha sigma and the sigma that separate a from b, c, d, and so forth. So um, now then, I, uh, if I think of, um, uh, uh, let's see, then if I think of like d, a, DAC. DAC, of course, like D itself is equal to delta T1, right? DAC is equal to sum over sigma in T1, alpha sigma, and delta sigma AC, right? 
So it's basically summing over all the sigma that separate, separate A from C. And uh, the alpha sigma separate from A, uh, let's say I have A, B, C, D here. So for the for lambda A, B will be sum over all the alpha sigma that will separate this A, B from C, D. Maybe I have one of this, uh, one of this sigma is separate A, B from C, D. I have uh, another sigma that separate A, B from C, D, maybe like that. I'm sorry, for, um, all this will separate A from C, right? I'm also like, if I have like uh, this one, this one actually be belong to uh, lambda A, basic, basically all the alpha sigma that separate A from B, C, D, and this one will also separate A from C. So therefore, like, as you can see, this sum here therefore should be equal to lambda a b plus lambda a plus lambda c right and similarly i can have d b d is equal to lambda a b so i i will count all that trying to separate b from d so lambda a b will be will be the you include those alpha sigma separate b from d and more for lambda b and plus lambda d and similarly, I have D A B is equal to. Uh, and now this time I don't have lambda A B because lambda A B will not separate A from B. So I have lambda B and lambda A, and I have D C D is equal to lambda lambda C plus lambda D. So then I if I I add these two and subtract these two, basically I have lambda D A C plus d b d minus d a b minus d c d what i get as you can see this will be equal to 2 lambda a b where this will be equal to 2 lambda a b or i can write like lambda a b is equal to one half this thing here but if i compare this guy here this is exactly equal to mu sigma way so it's just equal to this guy here so therefore, like, this is just equal to mu sigma. And uh, and so therefore, like, what, what, what is mu sigma again? Mu sigma... Uh, okay, mu sigma therefore is equal to lambda AB, mu sigma is equal to lambda AB, but lambda AB is equal to this guy, right? It's equal to all the alpha sigma the sum of all the alpha sigma that sigma, sigma separate a b from c d and uh now if if i think of like what is okay it's get pretty com maybe i should be com should be careful like this maybe i put a sigma pi here this is a dummy variable so lambda a b will be all the sigma pi such that like um Alpha sigma, some of the all the alpha sigma pi where sigma pi that separates a b from c d. And now think of like what is the sigma? The or, our original sigma actually separate a b from c d, right? So therefore, my original sigma should belong in this this set here. So therefore, like lambda a b, this one here is equal to lambda a b, right? But uh, this will be equal to this alpha sigma pi that's some like uh, all this sigma that will separate a b from c d and one of them will be alpha sigma right because alpha sigma also separate a b and c d with some other sigma pi there also separate a b from c d so therefore apparently this will be bigger than alpha sigma because all the alpha is supposed to be non-negative um, so therefore we have like mu sigma is bigger than alpha sigma so and uh, come if i recall what we have again like once we show this uh we we we, we since i mu sigma is bigger than alpha sigma we have the the tree there is basically like uh Oh, actually, maybe I continue this first. Like, mu sigma is bigger than alpha sigma, and um, 
and so therefore like uh let me get some space here again so oh, okay basically what, what i'm talking about talking about is just repeating what i said earlier but and then like since i have this bigger than this so um I, I, I will claim that this is actually equal to this because like I cannot have like mu sigma is strictly bigger than alpha sigma because like I have delta d uh, basically uh, the the um, additive tree metric derived from the mu sigma there the the delta d that's basically equal to sum of this mu sigma and sigma in t1 delta sigma uh, is bigger than the like, sum over alpha sigma delta sigma sigma in t1 if i really have like this is strictly bigger basically if i mu sigma is strictly bigger than alpha sigma i will have this and again this is actually is just equal to delta t1 and this is actually equal to d and again from earlier lemma, lemma 9 there like this is not allowed I, I have to have like delta d is less than uh, equal to d so therefore uh, we will have like uh, mu sigma is exactly equal to alpha sigma so mu sigma equal to alpha sigma by the same token we can show that uh, alpha sigma is equal to beta sigma and again once we specify the mu here uh, the tree structure is has specified as well so therefore like tree one uh, because alpha sigma and beta sigma is the same so therefore the tree has to be the same as well so uh and uh and that's 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 it